spirited. Stop lying. Let me show you what you do. That's what you, you did. No, no, he's That's what you just did to his wall. Don't tell me that one spit. That was rude. Excuse me, Skylar. Ah, oh, their first argument on US soil. How sweet. Isn't it beautiful to see Angela and Michael share milestone moments like this? Okay. Don't spit at me! Yeah. <laughs> now, from Angela controlling Michael's every move to Patrick finally winning over Thais's dad. <laughs> And not to mention Gino lying about Jasmine's paperwork. This episode certainly gives us plenty to dive into. How about all the immigration work, paperwork I'm working on now for your permanent residency? Like in present tense, but three weeks ago, Gino told me that he submitted my paperwork. Surprise, surprise, Gino has been keeping secrets. But before we get into that, let's start with Michael and Angela. So today is Michael's first day in his new home, and Angela is taking time to show him around, show him all of the important things. You know, the roads, how to fuel a car so that he can act like her chauffeur one day. She's got him putting up Christmas lights and entertaining her rude grandkids. Michael, you got some crusty, dirty feet. You need some lotion. Is this how the kids behave here in America? Yeah, but my dog skin is screaming. Dry. Yeah, it might only be day one, but I think this is really giving us a glimpse into what Michael's future will be like. He's gonna be expected to be at Angela's beck and call to do everything she instructs him to. I mean, it says everything that even when she takes him out to dinner, Michael isn't even allowed to order what he wants from the menu. I want you to try the shrimp and grits. Shrimp and grits. Yes. Chicken fingers. No, grits and shrimp. <laughs> it might only be his first full day in the States, but already Angela is getting some kind of sick joy from controlling every little thing that Michael does. Now, they're not just out at this dinner for fun tonight. You see, Angela's trying to force Michael and Skylar, his stepdaughter, to spend time together. He wants them to try and bond. But before they get to spend some quality time together, before they get to dive into any real conversation, their food arrives. I mean, this is not it. Mm. Oh my God. Look at him, look, look at how Michael's looking at those ribs with more yearning in his eyes than he's ever, ever looked at Angela before. It seems he wants them far more than he wants his grits and shrimp. And dare I say it, far more than he wants his wife. But here's where things take a surprising turn. When Angela offers Michael some, when he takes a bite, he seems to spit it out. He seems to spit some over his shoulder and at the wall. Okay. Real pig. Did you just spit on there? It's no spit. Michael, 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 did you? Baby, what did you do? He just spit on the wall. Angela's absolutely right. We all saw it. Michael did spit something out at the wall. And unfortunately for Michael, having just been caught and called out for his actions, it seems he automatically reverts to lying about it. He denies he spit, and I suspect he's doing so because he's trying to keep Angela calm. He wants to try and avoid a fight, but his plan, his lie, has backfired. You see, Angela saw it with her own eyes, and the fact that Michael's lying to her face causes her anger to hit the roof. You spirited, stop lying. Let me show you what you do. That's what you, you do. No noise. That's what you just did to his wall. Don't tell me that one spit. That was rude. Excuse me, Skylar. Now, for as disgusting as that was, and she's right, it isn't acceptable to be doing that at a restaurant, I also don't think it's right. There's no need for her to humiliate him and confront him like this. Like, in what world does she think that her reaction, her spitting back at him, is in any way acceptable? Yeah, I mean, what she just did is even worse. Now, Angela tries to justify her actions, justify her anger, by saying she's not angry because of the spitting, but rather Rather because he lied to her face. Yeah, the thing is, Angela, perhaps you should have just let the man order what it was that he wanted from the menu rather than trying to force feed him something. Either way, after Angela goes outside for a cigarette to calm down, then comes back inside, Michael apologises. He says it was a mistake. 
but he remains adamant that he didn't spit. Particle in my mouth from the, from in my lips. So I just like spit it out, not actually spit. I would never spit on the floor. Right. But Michael, that is still spitting, dude. Like, I don't know, maybe there's a misunderstanding about what constitutes a spit. He clearly seems confused, but Angela forgives him. And if Angela can get over it, then so can we. Remember, tonight isn't meant to be about the food. It's about building his relationship with Skylar. It's about clearing the air. He might now be in America, but Skylar clearly still isn't a fan of Michael. She's incredibly suspicious about him. I doubt that Michael's in this relationship for the right reasons. So I just worry that he is going to do what he wants to do and just leave mama heartbroken. Skylar, <laughs> trust your gut. I mean, it's absolutely spot on. But can you really blame the man? Skylar knows her mum well. She knows how she is. But what's really grinding Skylar's gears is how Angela and Michael are just pretending like everything's fine. She can't stand this act that they're putting on when she knows all too well that only a few weeks ago they were about to break up. Mama might forgive you, I but know. I'm gonna be honest. I mean, I'm not as forgiving because I really don't care. When you drag her through hell, you're dragging the whole family through hell. Skylar asks her mum what it's gonna take for her to see Michael for what she claims he is, which is a liar and a cheat. But Angela responds by saying she took her wedding vows seriously. She's not gonna give up on her husband. In fact, she says coming to America is a fresh start for all of us. Only her words don't seem to have much of an effect on Skylar at all. I don't know if Skylar's ever really fully gonna accept Michael as my husband. I'm hoping she does, but that's something her and Michael have to work on. Angela has a lot of faith in Michael, and for as misguided as that is, faith is something that Gino and Jasmine could certainly do with a dose of. You see, when we join the pair of them in this episode, it's finally time for the prizes to be awarded in Jasmine's pageant. And while unfortunately she doesn't win the top prize, Jasmine is awarded the subcategory prize. She's awarded the prize of Miss International Latina. From Panama, Jasmine Bonita! Now, somewhat surprisingly, Jasmine takes the news that she hasn't won the overall prize, the overall crown, quite well. She's actually just happy to have been awarded anything at all, and she feels like the pageant has been really beneficial for her. It's really helped with my self-confidence, she says. And heaven knows what with Gino's constant critiques, I need all the help with self-confidence that I can get. Last night, you and I had a very bad fight. I need space, time out from Gino. You know. I'm very mad. Good job. Thank you. Now, Gino is convinced that the coaching, as he likes to call it, is what helps Jasmine to win. But uh, Jasmine sees things completely differently. She's sick to death of hearing her husband critique her day after day instead of encouraging her. And Gino's comments have clearly been weighing on her mind. You see, after the pageant has ended, backstage, Jasmine just can't hold back anymore. She can't stand how hypocritical she feels Gino has been. And then the audacity you have to be first row when I won my crown, you pretending that you were the lovely husband. Jasmine claims that Gino's supportive behavior during the pageant was completely fake. You have no right to cheer and applaud to act happy for me when behind the scenes you're acting as if nothing I do is good enough, she says. Now, the thing is, I think she's being incredibly harsh on Gino here. Like, what does she expect him to do? Not applaud, not applaud that his wife has been crowned Miss International Latina. Can you imagine? Like, can you imagine if he didn't applaud? She'd have gone ballistic. Look, Gino has been trying to help. He really does believe that his feedback, his critique, whatever you want to call it, has come from a good place. It's come from a place of wanting to see his wife do well. But much to his dismay, Jasmine believes that she won in spite of him rather than because of him. 
and that accusation has really upset Gino. I don't like the tone of your voice and I don't like your attitude. I've been supporting you every day. I tried to show you, give you a couple of tips Yes, Gino, but therein lies the problem. No one wants your tips. I mean, look in the mirror. You're not exactly Brad Pitt. You're not exactly in a position to give anyone tips on how to win a beauty pageant. But at this point, it's too late. Gino's pride has been well and truly hurt. You're just ungrateful, he tells Jasmine. You're always ungrateful, no matter what I do. And then he falls back on the same old argument he always seems to use, which is that no matter what he does, Jasmine never gives him any praise. How about all the times I Actually, supported you when you were in Panama and I paid your rent and I gave you money for your bills? When are you going to give me any credit for that? I owe like, this too. Gino's beginning to sound like a broken record, isn't he? It's not the first time he's brought this up. Every time that Jasmine does something that he doesn't like, he brings up the fact that he brought her here on a K-1 visa. You should be grateful to me for that, he keeps saying. But frankly, Gino, I think that's disgusting behaviour. Like, I'm sorry, but that's not something that you get to dangle over her, hold against her, forevermore. Yes, you brought her to the States, but let's not act like you didn't have a choice in the matter. You wanted to bring her here. You chose to bring her here. So you can't lord that over her for the rest of your marriage. How about all the immigration work, paperwork I'm working on now for your permanent residency? Like in present tense, but three weeks ago, Gino told me that he submitted my paperwork. Jasmine recounts how Gino told her he'd submitted her paperwork weeks ago. Why is he now acting as if it hasn't been done yet, she asks. What's he waiting for? And it's a very, very good question. Could it be that Gino is delaying the application on purpose? Is he holding off from submitting it because he knows deep down that the marriage is already doomed? Did you submit my paperwork? Yes or no? For my permanent resident? You're not listening. You, did you submit the paperwork? Yes or no? Yeah, that, that right there, is the face of a man who did not, in fact, submit the paperwork he said he did. Now, while trouble looms large in Gino and Jasmine's relationship, much to everyone's surprise, there is one couple this episode who seems to be defying all odds, who seem to be getting on incredibly, and that's John and Carlos. I don't get it. I asked your dad to go fishing and do stuff, instead he goes and gets a beer with John. Yeah, I didn't understand either. Neither do I. Like, what are they even talking about? John and Carlos don't even speak the same language. Don't forget, it was John that actually told Carlos off at the family dinner party. He told him in no uncertain terms that they wouldn't be kissing the ring. His brother wouldn't be begging him for a blessing. And yet, despite that, Carlos is very happy to hang out with John rather than spending time with his son-in-law and daughter. Patrick's got a big heart, you know? Patrick? Patrick. Oh. Now, while it's certainly not the most communicative of conversations, thanks to a little help from a translator app, John explains to Carlos that Patrick finds it very difficult to open up to people. You just need to give him a chance, he says. So with that, with his new best friend's words ringing in his ears, Carlos heads down to the pier to actually get to know his son-in-law. Bom, Patrick. John falou para mim que é um cara legal, um cara muito família. Trata bem a minha filha, a minha netinha. Mas é o Patrick, eu acho que precisa mais expressar as emoções dele, né? Isn't it hilarious that it's John of all people who finally managed to get Carlos to give Patrick a chance? But make no mistake, it is just a chance. This is the first baby steps towards creating a bond. By no means does this mean that he's forgiven or he's forgotten what happened in the past. Carlos still expects Patrick to ask for his blessing to have married his daughter. Out of respect, he says. And the moment he's been hoping for finally comes later on that evening as they play pool together. When you say no, da benza, primeiro best, like eu senti muito rejeitado. Faltou um pouco só de humildade sua. 
Entendeu? De chegar para mim e tal. Look, while I understand Carlos's position to an extent, while I understand that it's a cultural thing, it's a respect thing, at the same time, it does feel like Carlos has chosen to take this too far. Like, let's not forget, Patrick did ask for his blessing once before. It was Carlos who rejected him. Like, he can't just keep going on and on about how Patrick didn't ask for a blessing when it just isn't true. But once again, we see just how much this whole ordeal has hurt Carlos. No, I was really hurt. I was really hurt. I don't want to You can tell from Carlos's quivering lip that he's on the verge of tears. This whole conversation is very, very emotional for him. He's really over the moon that Patrick has finally opened up to him. And in return, Carlos is willing to do the same back. So that is why right now is the perfect time for Patrick to do what he knows needs to be done. Eu posso ter seu best dancer. Carlos tells Patrick that he was really hoping to hear those words from him, and the pair hug it out. It's lovely to see. You can tell just how much this really means. This is a heartfelt hug. It isn't just a formality. Now, Carlos goes on to tell Patrick that from right now, this moment on, he's his son-in-law. He means that from the bottom of his heart, he says. And while this is so long overdue, it really doesn't make it any less special. This is an authentic, genuine, raw moment that's lovely to see. In fact, Carlos is so touched by it all, he's so taken aback and overwhelmed, that even he, one of the most stubborn men of all time, actually apologizes for just how badly he's handled all of this. Desculpa, se eu te maltratei, os dias de atrás, eu estava meio... And with that, with the blessing now given, a huge burden has been lifted from both of their shoulders. Yeah, that is now one thing at least that's checked off Patrick's to-do list. Next up, Patrick, dare I say it, is for you to tackle all of the very, very deep lingering issues with your own dad. 